Hi guys, Tracy here with a really quick art journal page. This is really just me playing around with a face stamp that I bought from Jane. It's a Jane Davenport and I got it at Michael's. And uh, at first I thought I was going to use this stencil, which is also from Jane Davenport. It came with the acrylic paints that I bought yesterday, uh, but I'm going to change my mind. I pulled out uh, up in the top right hand corner are my Koi watercolors. I have my Derwent Ink Tense pencils there in that uh, Starbucks large uh, canister cup thing and then I have a couple of paint brushes and some water in that uh, paintbrush cleaning caddy thing and here are those stamp sets that I bought these are acrylic stamp sets first I'm just going to lay down some paper some paper I'm just gonna lay down some ink on the background paper so I'm taking a couple of different colors of the Derwent ink tense pencils I don't have too many of those so I didn't have many choices I just picked the colors that I had to work with the orange is called tangerine and you see me just adding some water I'm not adding a whole ton of water I don't want too much to go into the fold of the page this is called fuchsia and I'm not mixing these colors I'm trying to keep them pretty separate and then this is called peacock blue and because orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel, I'm being very careful to not have them mix because they will look pretty muddy if they did mix. And my paper here is gessoed because I had started using this notebook as a writing notebook and so I gessoed over the writing that was in it and so that's why the watercolor is acting a little bit differently than it would if I was just using plain paper in that it's kind of pooling up on top of it instead of soaking into it which just gives you a different look. Of course these pencils I'm talking about them as if they're watercolor pencils they do work like watercolor pencils but these ink tense pencils are actually a pencil version of ink and so I should uh, say that just to set the record straight because I think I refer to them as watercolors I use them like watercolors but they're permanent which is a little bit different than watercolors once they're once they're dry they will stay put so uh, I was pretty random in how I laid down my colors. I just wanted some large blocks of colors and I dried it with my heat gun. And then I also, I'm just kind of sopping up any extra bits of water off the page and that leaves some white marks behind and I really like the look of that. Now I was going to put a whole bunch of faces on this page but I very quickly decided that I really wanted to use this girl. I think she looks kind of sassy and so <laughs> that's what really appealed to me about this girl. She looks like she's got some attitude. Those brows I think and the pouty lip is what does it and I really like her. I stamped her with stays on ink which is waterproof so so that when I go to add water it's not going to smear all over the place. Now I'm just using very heavy brush strokes and the color that I'm using here is called uh, deep indigo. I didn't want to use a pure black because I thought it would just look too dark. This when I add water is just going to lighten and give me some nice shadows. What it will do is I'm I'm concentrating the the uh, pigment right over where the stamping was but you see as I wet it it gets it spreads out a little bit and uh, it it spreads and grows into my background to give me a little bit of shading around where the stamp was and it makes it look a little bit more like I actually drew this face of course I'm not a talented enough drawer to 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 draw such a nice face but eventually I, I think I might try to learn how to how to paint faces or draw faces so now whoa those lips I know she's sassy but those lips are a little bit too much so the nice thing about having gessoed my paper is that I can easily just blot these lips very much like you would blot your own lipstick with some paper towel or a napkin or something to uh to tone it down a little bit I was able to tone it down and then I added a little bit more water too. Now I'm using the peacock blue and I'm just going around where the color of her eye would be and um, that just brightens up the blue around where her iris would be. 
and adding a few more this time I'm going very light and I'm just adding a little bit of pigment below some of the places where there would be shadows on her face so in around the eyes under the eyebrows and I'm just extending some of that blue ink just pulling it around on the paper a little bit to give her a little bit more of a shadowy moody look adding a little bit of more intense orange which of course there was already orange on the background there but I just wanted it to be a little bit darker under her eyes. Now I'll use my heat gun to dry that up and I do want it to be really really dry before I add any marker or anything to it. Uh, I'm going to use a gel pen here and here I thought I would just try how the glaze gel pen looks which is uh, it, it looks very liquidy and clear going on but it dries to a nice opaque white but the thing about that pen is that it kind of mixed with the ink tense pigment underneath of it and it ended up leaving kind of like a really light blue instead of a very vivid white so I just went over it with my regular Sakura jelly pen they're both by Sakura the glaze and, and the regular jelly roll so now I just opened up my sketchbook there that's what you saw uh, just looking for some reference uh, just some ideas because I had been playing around with different ideas for wonky hair and I had this idea of these circles which is not my idea at all I copied it from somebody on YouTube and I think her name is Little Magical Art and uh, I'm I'm deciding to use some acrylic paint I want to come up with like a strawberry blonde color so I thought if I took yellow and added a little bit of red but I added too much red so there I just plopped a bunch more yellow in and I'm mixing it up with my palette and I'm actually going to dab this on with my fingers and this I saw on YouTube as well on an art journaling video and I just watched so many videos one night I couldn't sleep very well and I don't really remember who I learned this from so I do apologize that I can't get a re give a reference but I was watching a lot of little magical art her videos and so it very well might have been her but it could have also been one of the videos that just links up when you you know how it says like related videos it might be one of those so sorry that I can't uh, give you an exact source but I did see somebody else use their finger to add little circles I can't remember if they were doing it for hair or for something else but I like this look I want her to have really frizzy curly hair I love 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 curly hair on other people so I have very very straight hair and so I love to draw people with curly hair also curly hair is a really easy thing to draw because it's just a whole bunch of, of squiggle marks most of the time although this time I'm going to make her curly hair made out of little tiny circles so I'm just filling in some denseness, uh, some denseness, some density, sorry, uh, into the like the top part of her head so that the parts where basically where little tendrils, she's going to have like hair that's piled really high, but it's going to go off the page. So you're not going to know exactly how high it goes. Uh, but the places where there are little tendrils that might fall down, I want the uh, paint to be spaced out more and have more space between the circles. But the area of her hair that would be very very dense I don't want much space between the circles so and you can see that it, it turned kind of green there where it layered the yellow on top of the blue and that's a-okay it's an art journal page it doesn't have to be exactly realistic so I'm using my my ultra fine point sharpie pen to outline just multiple squiggly outlines around each of my fingerprints here and the marker was it the paint just wasn't quite dry enough so the marker was uh, losing its its I guess it was getting clogged a little bit by acrylic paint and so when that happens you just wipe it off with a soft cloth and then make sure that you write on something that doesn't have any paint on it just to get the ink flowing again and it was mostly dry you really shouldn't dry shouldn't write on marker put marker on anything that isn't hundred percent dry so I'm really liking how that looks I went in with this is actually not a black this is a fabric castell pit pen and it looks like it's the black one but it's actually a very dark warm gray and I decided to use warm gray because I thought it would be a little bit less harsh than using the black marker now I'm just going to I could have I thought about scribbling little 
uh, little white circles inside of the black circles, but I decided to just put little half circles inside and they're all on the same side. They're all on the far left side of each of those circles just to make it look more like there's a highlight on each of the little curls, like the light is catching the curls on one side. It's a very, very subtle detail, but those little details are one of the things that I really like to put in my pages. So I really like how she's looking and I want to give her a phrase and I'm going to give her the phrase that's actually in my in my notebook uh, with the girl with the circle hair. Um, and it is a phrase from a Mother Mother song. It's it, The song is called The Stand, and it's one of my very, very favorite songs. I love to listen to it in the car. It's not a new song. It's a couple years old now. But uh, one of the phrases in the song, it, it's like the guy says a line, and then the, there's like backup singer girls or something who, who kind of like mock him or say something kind of sassy to him. And so, and so this girl was looking so sassy. I just wanted to use one of those phrases. And so the phrase is, uh, it's like paradise spread out with a butter knife. And he says, talk about space. And it's a beautiful place. But it's so damn cold for the human race. But for the planets and the stars and everything else in Mars. And then the girl says, it's like paradise spread out with a butter knife. <laughs> it's just like, I love it. <laughs> uh, so I am referring to my book here. I'll tell you the title of the book. It is called The Scrapbooker's Handwriting Workshop, and I've talked about this book before. I really, really love it. And the font that I'm using is called Misfit. And this book just goes through a whole bunch of different fonts and shows you how to make them. And I'm not exactly 100% following it, but I'm using it as a reference. And then I made Paradise out of these letter stickers. These are from Pebbles. And now I'm going to go down a road towards using one set of letter stickers that are way too big. I really should have known right from the beginning that these were not going to balance off with the they're going to throw off the balance first of all the color I thought that the green color would be cool because it would pick up on the green that ends up inadvertently showing up in her hair from where those colors are layered together but a butter knife is just way too big <laughs> way too big it just dominates the whole thing and it's I really want this page to be more about the girl than about the phrase beside the girl so I just went back to my letter sticker stash and I knew that these sassafras letter stickers would be perfect. These sassafras letter stickers are perfect for almost anything. First of all, they're flat, so they're great for art journals, um, but also they're just like the perfect legible neutral shaped letter that goes with almost everything like they can look really casual if you give them a bouncing baseline or if you overlap them on top of each other but then if you line them up really really straight they can look a little bit more formal I just love these letter stickers from Sassafras and I have a whole big huge collection of them because they're out of print now of course and now I'm using a new thing this is a new uh, pit pen that I bought I love those Faber-Castell pit pens and I talk a lot about the regular tip like the the fine super fine and medium tip and I talk about the about the uh, brush tip this is the SB or soft brush tip and so this tip has quite a bit more give in it it's a lot more like a brush than a hard felt tipped marker and but it, it has the India ink in it so it has this beautiful really black permanent ink and it, it I think it just looks beautiful on this kind of a layout I'm not a huge fan of my own handwriting but I think that it turned out really great and all that I did was I pressed a little bit harder for the down strokes and tried to lift it up so that I was just using the very, very tip of it on the up strokes. And I really like how it looks. You really have to practice with that whole uh, pressing for down and I, I 
kind of messed up on the E, so I just replaced it with a new E. You really have to practice with the, uh, you know, pressing hard on the down and then using a really light hand on the upward brush strokes. And you can cheat a little bit, like you might have noticed as you watched me do it, that there were times when I was actually going down, but I was acting as if I was, like I was using a really, really light hand as if it was an upstroke. So, uh, so play around with it. You don't have to follow the rules. Just make it, do what makes you happy. And this layout really makes me happy. As plain as it is, it gave me a chance to use that stamp and and play around with it and, and the ink tense pencils as well. Now I'm just uh, taking some warm black paint from my Sakura Koi watercolor set there over to the over to the left or sorry over to the right and adding a little bit of water and just sprinkling some black dots all over it. I used my paper towel to just sop up one of the dots was fell right in her tear duct and it looked a little bit like she was crying black tears so I didn't want it to look like that so I just sopped it up and that is one of the benefits of watercoloring over gesso is that you can uh, if you grab it while it's still wet you can fix your your mistakes which is kind of nice a part of me can't wait to get off of the gesso paper and get working on the regular paper just to get with it but uh, another part of me is happy to have a couple of pages of of course you can always gesso pages as you go along but um, anyhow I was glad that this one had gesso on it so here are the photos. Thanks so much for watching this very unusual. This is an unusual one for me, but I thought I would share the process with you guys anyways. I don't usually share these more experimental things, but I thought I would uh, just go out on a limb and share this with you guys. So you have a video to watch until Thursday. Bye-bye. Have a great scrappy week.